The next question to ask is whether people can also combine autonomous and controlled motivation. Can I ask you a question? Which type of motivation do you hold for watching this video? Maybe you don't really have a reason to watch this video and you're just going through the motions. Maybe you're extrinsically motivated to watch this to obtain something else. Or maybe you're intrinsically motivated and really enjoy watching this video. But maybe you might also combine different types of motivation. Maybe, yes, indeed, there's part of you that says like, nah, I had nothing better to do than just keep on watching, so here I am. But at the same time, you might also feel like, yes, my teacher actually asks me to watch this video and I will be rewarded in terms of uh, greater grades when I actually do watch it. Or yes, maybe part of me indeed wants to have like a higher salary when I invest in personal development. Or maybe you combine external reasons for watching this video with interjected motivation and you feel proud if you really study hard or you would feel ashamed if you're not up to date with the latest types of um, motivating employees. Maybe you combine interjection with identification and you think like, yes, part of me also considers it's very important to keep updated on self-determination theory. Or you could consider yourself as, yes, I am a learner. I do indeed want rewards and, and I want to avoid punishments from others. But yes, being a learner is also something I really endorse. Or you could combine any of these types of motivation with um, being intrinsically motivated in watching this video. So actually, you might have either controlled motivation or autonomous motivation or combine both. And this is exactly what profile analysis aims to examine. Profile analysis does exactly that. It allows examining whether people combine different types of motivation, how those profiles of motivations then look like and what their consequences are. Within this study, we examined the combinations of autonomous and controlled motivation and examined what their implications were for job satisfaction, enthusiasm and burnout. So what did we do? We assessed people's autonomous and controlled motivation and tried to establish whether this motivation was either low or high, but both for autonomous and controlled motivation. We then included all different participants in our analysis and we asked cluster analysis to find groups who were very similar types of people within one group that were very different from the people that didn't belong to that group. For example, within this group highlighted here, people have high autonomous motivation but low controlled motivation, which is different from the other groups that could be identified. Importantly, this type of analysis is really exploratory. So you ask the statistics to find groups before really defining this, the number of groups or the uh, nature of these groups. Which groups would we find? Well, here you see the results. We could find indeed people who are high on autonomous and high on controlled motivation, people who are high on autonomous motivation but low on controlled, people who are low on autonomous and high on controlled motivation, and people who score low on both types of motivation. What do you think? How many people occupy the different profiles? Let's have a look at the samples first. Sample 1 was a representative Belgian sample of Belgian employees. Sample 2 included people working at the local government. Sample 3 were call center agents. Across the different samples, results were pretty similar in terms of the numbers that occupied the different profiles. About 1 in 3 employees was situated in the high autonomous, high control profile, and almost as many employees occupied the highly autonomous, lowly controlled profile. So that means that about half of the employees to six to ten employees actually um, had a profile that was characterized by high autonomous motivation. If you look at the four different four profiles then we see that they differ in the quantity of motivation, how much motivation the people in these profiles displayed, be it either autonomous or controlled, and they also differed in the quality of motivation. Much in line with SET we see that they differ in the degree to which they have autonomous motivation which is of high quality and not so much controlled motivation which is an indication of low quality of motivation. If you would rank order the different types of motivation, how would you rank order them in terms of quantity? How would you rank order them in terms of quality? If we look at the quantity of motivation, then we see that a high, high group has most motivation because they combine autonomous with controlled motivation.
Obviously, the low-low group has lowest levels of motivation. The highly autonomous and highly controlled group are in between. In terms of the quality of motivation, the picture looks completely, completely different. And then, the highly autonomous group has the highest quality of motivation, and the high controlled group has the lowest level of motivation, quality of motivation. The high high and the low low group are in between, because either they combine high levels of both types of motivation, with a high level of controlled motivation cancelling out the high quality motivation of autonomous motivation, and in the low low group none of the motivations are available. And if you would have to compare these different profiles, who would experience most job satisfaction, who would be most enthusiastic about their job, and who would experience most strains? And here are the results. You see that the different profiles differ in job satisfaction, enthusiasm and strain across the three different samples. If you compare the profiles with each other, then you can see that the numbers who don't share the same letter, they differ from each other. If they share the same letter, such as for example 488 and 502, then they are the same statistically. How would you summarize the results? Who's right? The quantitative perspective or the qualitative perspective? Well, this paper has spurred quite some debate. Our conclusion was that the high-high group, the high-autonomous high-controlled group, doesn't really differ from the autonomously motivated group in terms of well-being. They experience as much job satisfaction and enthusiasm and only differ slightly in the degree to which they experience strain. However, there's quite a big difference between those two profiles in the controlled and low-low profile. The control profile and the low-low profile don't really consistently differ from each other. So, neither the quantitative, neither the qualitative perspective is fully right. What is the correct answer? What is the correct results? What are the correct results? Well, you see that the high-high profile doesn't differ very much from the autonomous profile, but they both differ very much from the controlled and the low-low profile. The idea that the different types of motivation could combine into different profiles and that people within these profile report different levels of well-being and performance actually spurred quite a bit of research. Those studies use different approaches. First of all, uh, while the previous study uh, made use of word cluster analysis and really categorized people into mutually distinct categories, this paper, for example, uses latent profiles in which the degree is assessed to which people belong to a particular type of profile, although it doesn't really classify the people into only one profile. Secondly, while the previous paper combined autonomous and controlled motivation into different profiles, this paper focuses more on the different um, regulations. So it examines each and every one of the different regulations and then see how these combine. Finally, it also looks at different outcomes, including also performance, and that's why I want to talk you through this study. If you combine the different types of motivation ranging from a motivation over external to interdicted, identified and intrinsic motivation into different profiles, then we can also get like four different profiles. These authors termed them a motivated, moderately autonomous, highly motivated and balanced profiles. How do these deep profiles differ compared to the profiles we found in the previous research? What are the similarities? If you look at the a motivated profile, these people are high in A motivation and have low levels of other types of motivation, particularly the interjected, identified and intrinsic types. This profile could be compared to the low, low profile in the previous study. In terms of the moderately autonomous profile, here you see low levels of A motivation, the control types of motivation and moderately moderate levels of autonomous motivation. This profile could be compared to the highly autonomous profile and the low control profile, although the levels for autonomous motivation are relatively low in this profile compared to the other study. The highly motivated profile could be compared to the high high profile we had in the previous study, although the levels of controlled motivation are particularly low here. Finally, there is a balanced profile in which neither Autonomous types of motivation, neither control types of motivation are particularly present. This uh, type of mo uh, profile didn't really appear in the previous study.
How do the different profiles differ in terms of performance, satisfaction, engagement, and burnout? Well, here are the results. You see that the A-motivated profiles, people within this profile, don't feel very effective. They are not satisfied with their job, don't, are not really engaged, but they feel quite a bit of feelings of burnout. If you compare this A-motivated profile with people who are quantitatively more motivated, yet they combine autonomous and controlled motivation to the same extent, so the quality of the uh, motivation is still rather low, then uh, you can see that people in the balanced profile that I was talking about perform a little bit better, have more job satisfaction, more engagement and uh, less burnout, although these results are pretty average. So the balanced profile really represents the average Joe, so to speak. Results become better and positive when we look at the people in the moderately autonomous profile. These uh, feel effective, are satisfied with their job, are engaged and don't feel that much burnout. Similar results happen in the highly motivated profile. So combining control, controlled motivation together with autonomous motivation doesn't seem to lead to much more um, positive outcomes. It doesn't really lead to less positive outcomes either. Notably, the level of autonomous motivation is much higher in the highly motivated profile than in the moderately autonomous profile. So yes, the different types of motivation combined into different profiles and people within the different profiles differ considerably in terms of well-being and performance. This is one more last study on profiles I would like to share with you because it examines not only which profiles more, uh, pop up in this um, study, but also because it looks at stability within the um, profiles across time. Interestingly enough, these authors used yet again a different way of uh, combining the different types of motivation into the profiles. What did they do? Well, first of all, they looked at the global self-determination factor. This factor represents the degree to which each and every one of the different types represents self-determined or autonomous motivation. It's evident that uh, external types of motivation and A motivation score really low on this factor, while intrinsic motivation and identified score relatively high. So this is the global cell determination factor. Apart from this global factor, there's still some remaining aspects of intrinsic identified interjected external and A motivation that are not captured within this global factor and then these are examined separately as well. What are the results? Well, again, four different profiles are found and the first profile is a moderately motivated profile. This profile, people in this profile, have uh, moderate levels of global self-determination as well as moderate levels of each and every one of the different types of motivation. The controlled motivated profile, the second profile, has low levels of general self-determination and relatively high levels of controlled types and amotivated types of motivation. Then you have the autonomously motivated profile, which has average profile, uh, average motivation in terms of the global self-determination, but relatively high levels of autonomous types of motivation. Finally, you have the strongly motivated profile, and people within this profile score really high on the global self-determination, but also high on the remaining factors, except the one for intrinsic motivation. And again, these different profiles differ in the way they feel at work and the way they perform in the job. In line with SDT, the control profile reports the most level of burnout or emotional exhaustion, the most important component of burnout, and they perform the worst. They are also most likely to leave the organization or even leave the occupation, as is, for example, the case when a nurse starts to go into teaching and leave the hospital. Most interesting in this type of research, however, is the transition across the profiles. At a certain point in time, if you are um, moderately motivated, you're most likely to stay in this profile across the time of one year. However, it might also be likely that you move towards the control profile or even a little bit towards the autonomously motivated profile. Similar results happen for the controlled motivation profile. Most people are likely to stay within this profile, but there is some movements, for example, towards being autonomously motivated. When you are autonomously motivated, again, you're most likely to hold this um, profile for over the course of a year, but 
quite a bit of people also move towards the moderately motivated profile. So there is a decrease in autonomous motivation and an increase in control. In terms of the strongly motivated people, you can see that most people, if there is a transition, then they move towards a more controlled profile. So not necessarily the types of movements you would like to see. Bear in mind that only 30 to 40% of the people within this sample actually moved across profiles. So there's a high level of stability. So what's the take home message from these profile papers? First of all, people do combine the different types of motivation and they do have different profiles. These studies re represented the profile papers on uh, work motivation, but similar results have been found in other domains such as education or sports. Secondly, People in highly autonomous and controlled motivation profiles, so combining high levels of both autonomous motivation and controlled motivation, report oftentimes similar levels of well-being and performance as people who only have autonomous motivation. Interestingly enough, this would mean that adding controlled motivation to being already autonomous doesn't really help. It's not, it doesn't seem detrimental either. So it seems okay to go for work and um, willing to earn the paycheck. As long as you're autonomously motivated, this might not have negative implications for your well-being and performance. Another thing happens, however, for people who have only controlled motivation. They are not reporting higher well-being of performance than people in A-motivated profiles. So having only controlled motivation for your job might not be better than having no motivation at all. So what would be your take home message from all this? Motivating people autonomously really pays off in terms of their well-being and performance. Adding controlled motivation might not have beneficial results.